Thank you so much, Vika. Uh, so, uh, I, I actually began my career with ICC Bank, uh, started in the area of uh, offering financial services to low-income households, uh, built that business for five years, and then at certain point of time started to feel that uh, finance is a very, very basic capability that needs to be available to everybody. Uh, when you look at the India as a whole, you start to see that over 90% of the country is an informal sector. Uh, these are customers who, in order to even earn their living, need some access to capital. Most people are self-employed. They need to set up some business to be able to start to, to earn. Uh, so finance becomes really, really critical. Um, at some stage, I started to feel that we need to make a dent to this entire uh, access to finance piece. Uh, and I moved from uh, Mumbai to Chennai in 2006. Um, ever since then, Chennai has been home. This is Karam Bhumi now. Um, Chennai is kind of a place uh, which was exciting for us because of two or three reasons. Uh, this has traditionally been a place where finance, uh, specifically the non-bank based finance, has taken up in a big way. Uh, but for me, another special reason was that I was able to connect uh, with a business school called IFMR. Uh, and we started off our first operations there. I set up something called the IFMR Trust, uh, which has now built two big businesses called Dwara Solutions and Northern Art Capital. And then in 2017, uh, we started to see that uh, the world was changing quite a bit. In India, we started to see that technology, uh, Aadhaar, mobile phone penetration was all improving access for customers. And we started to think that now we can offer finance at scale using some of these uh, opportunities. And I moved on to then set up Kaleidofit. So that's been my quick journey. Uh, but Chennai is Karambu. And how many uh, players in the informal economy have you worked with so far? So we work with uh, today 40 different uh, entities. Uh, these are spread over different uh, states. We have operations now in 14 states uh, through these partnerships. The idea for us has always been to say that uh, if you are dealing with the informal sectors, uh, customers, they're not going to be the first people to take a mobile phone, download your app. So we needed some kind of an assistance. Uh, and we started to look at partners who were already reaching out to customers so that we can partner with them and then build scale. Okay, all right. Uh, you asked me to call you Raj, so I'm going to do that. Raj, my boss is also called Raj. So go Thank on. you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Raj. Um, I'm founder of AquaConnect. Uh, like I work, I represent a, a niche industry called aquaculture, right? Aquaculture is nothing but growing fishes and shrimps in the controlled environment, like in the pond, in the marine cages, right? So um, you'd be surprised to know that uh, India is the second largest producer of fish and shrimp that is like grown in the farms, right? We are the largest exporter of so shrimp. So Raj, pastor. let's talk about your journey. Why did you think of getting into aquaculture and uh, did you get access to finance? Just quickly tell us sure. about your story, yeah. Sure. So I'm a small town boy. I uh, went to IIT Kanpur and uh, when I passed out, I joined uh, IT conglomerate. And a uh, few years later, I thought like I should be you know, finding a, a startup. So that's when uh, like I founded a first tech startup and then I moved on to this. And currently uh, what we are doing is we are working with about 60,000 farmers who are producing fish and shrimp. And uh, we are enabling uh, you know, technology assistance for them to improve the efficiency of their farming. That's the first part. The second part, we are enabling market linkage to them and uh, in third, we are also enabling finances for them so that they would be able to uh, do their business in a, a much better fashion. Okay, thanks. Mr. Duraswamy, Veritas Finance is uh, doing uh, some exceptional work in uh, yes. getting access to MSMEs, funding access to MSMEs. Just very quickly, tell us, uh, you know, tell us about your story. Why did you choose this particular area? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I'm a management graduate from Institute of Rural Management, Anand, where Puneet also is, uh, come, comes from. And after having about more than two decades of experience in financial services, working in Cholamandalam Investment Finance Company, me and my colleague, uh, 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 some of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Prakash Rai and Suchin, and, and we all um, started thinking about uh, getting into socially relevant financing. So. Uh, but 2015, April, Veritas was born, and, and we are just about um, six, seven years old. And this, uh, about six, seven years, I think we have uh, made a significant impact into the MSME financing. Uh, we, we fund 
people who are otherwise have to depend on the uh, local money lenders, uh, or what typically is known as Kanduvati. And, and we make interventions to, to uh, typically reach out to the um, vegetable vendors, uh, um, fruit uh, street vendors, and uh, Kirana shops, pharmacies, and service related industries. Today we have uh, uh, presence in over about eight states. Uh, we started off in Tamil Nadu, and, and we are in about eight states. We have lent in this last about six years more than 2,000 crores, and, and we have reached out to more than about 70,000 customers. And, and we have been, uh, we, we started in 2015, today yeah, we are a 2,100 crore old company. Yeah. Thank Fascinating. Moeen, um, you want to quickly tell us about uh, Agnikul, the rocket you're trying to build. Uh, you know, tell us about your story. You're very young. You started out very quickly. Uh, why did you choose, of, uh, choose to go to the path of entrepreneurship? Sure. So uh, just like every other engineering graduate, didn't know what to do in life. <laughs> Then went and pursued MBA in uh, aviation management in Australia and was working in Qantas for some time. And I have a very niche interest in the space law. For example, here we are monitored, controlled by a set of frameworks and guidelines. Now this question always lingered, who is actually controlling the space? And then the answer also came up with it. Today, uh, when we started, there were around like six or seven countries in the entire world that were space-faring nations. And nobody else was doing it. And in the US, NASA was the only name that you would have heard before in 2010. But today, you will hear SpaceX more, more than the NASA. So there was a paradigm shift in the people's approach about the space itself. Everybody wanted to democratize. We also wanted to do exactly the same thing. Make space accessible for a common man. That's exactly wanted, what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that even the agriculture can use space as a platform. Logistics can use space as a platform pretty much every industry should start using space as a platform. And that's, that's where the idea came in, like first we need to bridge something between the earth and space. And that's what Agnikul does. If you have any payloads, if you need anything that needs to be put into space, so today's satellites do that job. Anything that needs to be done, Agnikul is your HF business.